Now here's the line of Heat 2A, the Tide in lane one, Kellogg's lane two, Miss T Plus in lane three, the Circus Circus in lane four, and on the outside, the Gerst Amber, driven by Ken Muscatel. Coming down to the start, green flag, and they are off and running. The Tide has the favorite inside spot on this course. As wide as the course is, the turns can be very, very tricky. Lane two, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes now moving out in front, along with the T-plus in lane number three. Look at them hop through that second turn. That's the one where they have to be careful. George Woods, Jr., careful and strong. He comes out of it in the lead in the tide. And I'll tell you what, in lane three, you can see the T-plus, and between those two boats, in the middle of their both of those rooster tails is the Kellogg's Tony the Tiger. Watch him, Dick, as they come down here in corner number four. There's another boat in there. There he is. Very evenly matched this time around. George Woods Jr. finds a little bit of power coming out of turn number four. He puts it into effect, and he takes the lead. So George Woods Jr. now is your leader, but look at Kellogg's coming on. Mike Hansen has really got Tony the Tiger revved up. The Frosted Flakes boat is coming on strong, and they're fanned out almost perfectly on the course with a Miss T-plus riding in third. A great shot from our helicopters as the T-plus goes wide. We look at our leader, the Tide, George Woods Jr. That boat is in, whoop, getting a little light there as we look at Kellogg's in the rooster tail of the Tide, currently riding in second place. It's a good time to tell everybody that these guys don't know the water conditions from one spot to another. Miss T Plus, still learning the boat. Stephen David put this boat in the water for the first time here in Evansville. He's got to find out how it reacts to the other wakes and the air currents coming off other boats. He's not sure. He'll take this as a learning experience. Look at this as they come down the front straight. It's the tie boat in the lead. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes trying to close the gap. Mike Hansen doing a great job of driving. He's got the power going for him as they go into the turn. Let's see if Tide can hold on to the lead. He's got the advantage. He has less of a course to run because he's on the inside. But with the speed boat on the outside, he can maintain a little bit more speed and sometimes make up that distance. But it doesn't look like George Woods Jr. is going to give him that chance. As you're talking about the race course, you have to learn it as we look at the Circus Circus back in action for the first time since the accident in Detroit. This course, every course, changes every time. As we look at the Gerst Amber, Ken Muscatel currently riding in fifth place. Every time they go around the course, it changes. A roller, a wave, a hole. They have to read it. They have to be quick. And this boat is the quickest of them all. And heat to A, the tie boat, George Woods Jr. takes the win. Oh, that is going to make that crew happy. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes in second. Miss T plus third. The Circus Circus in fourth. And Gerst Amber with Ken Muscatel finishes in fifth place. We'll be back to the Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio Freedom Festival right after this timeout. Jim Hendrick along with Dick Crippen here at Evansville, Indiana on the Ohio River as we look at one end of the course, there is the spectator fleet. Let's go down to Dick Trippin now with the winner, George Woods of the last heat. George, uh, I don't think it could have been any prettier. Oh, thank you very much, Dick. Uh, boat's handling very, very well. You know, it's, it's rough out there, and it seems that it likes, it likes the rough water. So, you know, if the other guy's got to lift because it's a little too rough, I think that's going to give us an advantage all day long. You appeared to have a challenge from the Kellogg's for just a short time out there, and all of a sudden he kind of fell off the pace. Well, after I got out a little bit, then I can kind of move around somewhat, kind of kind of work him over a little bit is what it's called. And, <laughs> and, and it's no fun being right on somebody's hip or just being slightly behind them because they can kind of steer you around, and that makes you me make your maneuvers maybe just slightly a little hesitant. Well, you had no hesitancy leaving the start line. You knew what you wanted, and you went for it. We wanted the 400 points, and we got her. We'll see if that one ounce of luck is in the future shortly. Right now, Heat 2B, Miss Budweiser, Art Construction, Alvey's American Eagle, and the Winston Eagle ready on the course. And this will be the second time head-to-head -head competition between what many consider the two top boats. With Winston Eagle on the outside, Budweiser in lane number one. And that's where it's going to be interesting as they take the green flag and 
head down this fast Ohio River course to turn number one. You can see that Winston Eagle on the left of your screen has started to break away a little bit, but the real breakaway boat is the boat in lane number one, the Miss Budweiser. You can see the front of the boat hitting some of the wave action down in turn number two as they come out on the back straightaway. It looks like a challenge from the Ark construction boat. He's in between those two, sitting back in the rooster tail. The challenge is mounted by the Winston Eagle, Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer, sees the challenge, comes up on it, takes the lead, Ark construction now riding in third place. Still the challenge is there from Winston Eagle in second. This is the first of three laps. 151.412 as Winston pushes the Budweiser to over 151 mile an hour lap. That's one thing you can count on with these two boats. You know that one is going to push the other all the time. You know that Chip Hanauer is watching in his rear view mirrors which sit off to his side right and left to see where the Winston Eagle is and he's going to keep an eye on him and if if that boat fills up that little mirror that he looks into, he's going to hit the power all he's got to try to get away from him. Right now, he's maintaining a good margin, and it's very steady. This is your lead boat, the Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer, out of the state of Washington, out of the state of Michigan, in second place, through that veil of the rooster tail. You can see the day glow red of the Winston Eagle. Are you ready for this, Dick? The Budweiser has just been pushed to a new two-mile competition lap record of 156.7. Budweiser, it's a new world record on a two-mile course. The old record, guess who held it? Last year, same course, Budweiser, an hour, but he beats his old record by about three mile an hour. Well, it's the pushing of Winston Eagle that's forcing them to go that fast, and right behind Winston Eagle, riding in third, is the Ark Construction Boat, American Spirit, driven by Mark. Mark Evans. Three boats that are putting on a fine race for the 100,000 fans. There you see Alvey's American Eagle, Mitch Evans, the only piston packer up front coming home for the checkered flag, however, is the Miss Budweiser. Chip had our final turn down the straightaway. Great job at driving. And another record, a new six-mile heat, two-mile course world record at 154.185 average, beating his old record by a couple of miles an hour. Second place to the Winston Eagle, third to our construction, and the American Eagle finished overall for it. Now it's time for the T-Plus Performance Corner, an inside look at Unlimited Hydros. Hi, I'm Mitch Evans, driver of Ed Cooper's piston-powered Unlimited Hydroplane. I'm here today to tell you the difference between the turbine engine and the piston engine we use in our boat. As you can see, there's quite a difference in physical size between the Circus Circus turbine engine and the Allison aircraft engine that we use. This engine was built and designed World War II, used in the P-38s and P-51s, where the turbine engine came out of the Chinook helicopters in the Vietnam War. These engines weigh about 2,000 pounds and produce about 2,500 horsepower, where the turbine weighs about 700 pounds and produces almost 3,000 horsepower. This Allison aircraft engine that we use is turbocharged and fuel injected. We currently hold all the qualifying and competition lap speed records for the piston-powered unlimited hydroplane. Basically, we have used all the horsepower we can out of this engine and looking to change in the future. When we change from the turbine engine and put the piston engine away, that will be the end of a legacy, not only for us, but for the people that participated in the sport years ago, such as Garwood, Bill Muncy, and Dean Chenoweth. 